At the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. I recently was given something. Well, actually, I gave it to myself. I recently had something that I've never had before. Maybe I should put it that way. I recently had something that I've never had before. It was a new experience. I've never had a black eye. I recently had a black eye about two weeks ago. A real shiner. I would love to stand before you and give you a heroic story, like I defended someone's honor or I broke up a fight. But unfortunately, all I did was walk too fast while I was setting a remote and I walked into a door. Well, I ended up in the hospital. I needed stitches and the black eye got worse over the next few days. Well, on day four, I had to go out to, to, to get something at a shopping mall. I had never walked through a shopping mall with a black eye before. And if you have, maybe you experienced the same thing that I did. People would see me walking around with a big black eye. They would look at me and then look away. I'd keep walking. Someone else would look at me and then look away. Over and over and over again, after a while, I let it become a game. I wondered how many people would just look at me and keep looking at me. No one kept looking at me. They would look, avert their eyes. They would look, avert their eyes. Because the black eye, I'm guessing, represented something. It was a sign of obvious violence. Whether they thought I was in a fight, I don't know, or in some kind of accident, or indeed walk into a wall, the black eye was a sign of some violent act that people just didn't want to look at or deal with, a sign. So much of what we do and say can be signs to one another. That first reading, this first week of Lent, it's sort of our yearly visit with Jonah, who ended up being a sign Begrudgingly, he became a sign. I mean, he did not want to go to Nineveh, remember. He didn't like the people. He was convinced they wouldn't repent. He didn't want to, to waste his time. And yet God kept after him. That's why he ended up in a whale for three days. He finally gave in. He followed the directives, directives of God. And he became a sign because of what he did. And what he did was listen. He finally heard God's voice, listened, and gave in. He became a sign. We human beings love signs. In the gospel this day, Jesus speaks directly of signs, reminding his listeners that Jonah was a sign, but now they've been given a greater sign, a better sign, a more obvious sign. Because in Jesus, we hear the voice of the Father. In Jesus, we are offered the face of the Father. In Jesus, we are called to be signs like him. My friends, during these Lenten days, you and I are invited to take some time to, to look at the cross. His cross. Which for us is the greatest of all signs, a sign of letting go. Jesus Christ didn't deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. And in the end, he was even willing to let go of his humanity so his father could speak through him, so that his sacrifice could become for us a means of salvation so that his sacrifice could become for us a sign of what real love is about. It's about trust. It's about letting go. It's about truly believing that God is with us, that he seeks to act through us. We need to be open to him, which is why the whole season of Lent truly is such a gift. Forty days. As Jesus went into the desert for 40 days, we are invited to go into our desert for 40 days. 
Praying just a little bit more, fasting just a little bit more, giving alms, works of charity, just a little bit more so that through us, through the signs that we can become, Jesus can continue to work, to reach out to those in need, to listen to those who need to be listened to, to serve those who need to be served. My friends, you and I during these days are called to be just like him so that God's presence can be seen in some way every day.